If you are a student watching me from India right now, I want to ask you, do your parents have dreams for you? Do they want you to be an engineer, a doctor? Chances are the answer is yes to one of those options. I have one more question. Do your parents' dreams align with yours? Do you also see yourself becoming a doctor or getting that coveted engineering degree and that lucrative pay package at a big tech firm? If the answer is yes, then stay with me. And even if the answer is no, still stay with me. Because if you are a student in India, no matter what your dream is, you are battling academic pressure. Have a look at this headline. 26 deaths in 2023 in Kota, the highest number of suicides among students in a calendar year since 2015. For the unworst, Kota is a city in Rajasthan in India. It's famous for its coaching centers for engineering and medical entrance examinations. But now, India's coaching capital is becoming its suicide capital too. Hello and welcome. You are watching Gravitas Plus. I am Molly Gampir and today I want to talk to all parents, all educationists and all students because if we don't act fast, our very future could be at stake. Let's just go back to Kota. The city recorded its 26th death this year. A 20-year-old NEET or NEET aspirant from West Bengal died from suicide. NEET, N-E-E-T, is the National Eligibility Come Entrance Test. If you want to study medical courses in India, you have to qualify in this highly competitive examination. This recent suicide adds to a growing list. There is an alarming trend emerging. According to Rajasthan police data, there were 15 suicides in 2022, 18 in 2019, 20 in 2018, 7 in 2017 and 17 in 2016. You know why there was no suicide recorded in Kota in 2020 and 2021? Because coaching centres were shut during the pandemic. And then there is JEE, the Joint Entrance Exam. This is a national level exam which one has to ace to get into an engineering college in India. I don't have to tell you this, these exams are highly competitive. There is fierce competition extreme pressure for anyone sitting for these exams an average day looks very different classes extra classes tuitions burning the midnight oil those who have sat for these exams and aced them will tell you it's like running on a treadmill you only have two options either to get down or keep running and you would think the race is over if you get in sadly it has only started one has to adapt to a highly competitive environment what are the chances you can crack the exam? Will you get a good rank? In 2023, the total number of unique candidates who appeared for both sessions of the JEE main exam was a whopping 11,13,325. I'm guessing most of these aspiring engineers want to get admission into the Indian Institute of Technology, IIT, revered globally, famous for its placement seasons, lucrative job offers. There are 23 IIT campuses in India. A total of 17,385 seats are available in all of these. What are the odds that you'll get in? You do the maths. You want to become a doctor, a surgeon, a dentist? The total number of registered candidates in NEET 2023 were 20,87,000 462. More than 20 lakh students in India aspire to study medicine. The total number of MBBS seats available in India, just about 1 lakh plus. Total number of BDS seats, 28,000 plus. BDS stands for Bachelor of Dental Surgery. Once again, you calculate the odds. It's like you are being set up for disappointment, for failure. I began by talking about a tragedy the suicide of a NEET aspirant in Kota. Between January 2019 and December 2022, the Kota police recorded 52 suicides by students, including 27 enrolled with different coaching centres. These figures are hard to digest, but it's a reality that we must face. It's a reality we need to change. And the story is not just limited to Kota, by the way. It's a pan-India issue. 
It's a silent crisis which needs to be tackled. According to the National Crime Records Bureau, in 2021, students accounted for 8% of the total suicides in the country. Analysis of the data shows that the number of students who died by suicide rose by 70% in a decade in India. India is losing its youth to suicides. What could the causes be? There are many triggers according to mental health experts. One, the pressure to live up to family expectations. Indian education is competitive. The chase for the perfect score, for 100 upon 100 marks, for the highest grade, so on and so forth. We have glorified perfection. Coaching culture celebrates the toppers. Just open your school diary or magazine. It will dedicate an entire page to those who made the cut. Of course, I'm not saying don't celebrate those who excel. I'm simply trying to say don't criticize or mock those who do not make the cut. Every year, scores of students leave their hometowns. They shell out money to enroll in the country's premier coaching institutions. They have a dream to crack the prestigious entrance exam. It could be IIT, JEE, NEET, UPSC. For those who come from economically weaker sections, cracking an exam like this is not just a dream. It's a ticket to a better life with more opportunities. So we cannot blame them for immersing themselves in the cutthroat competition. Some, in fact, even attach their self-worth to their capability to crack such an exam. So who is to be blamed for this silent epidemic? Is it the family? The coaching center? If you try and hold the coaching center accountable, they would perhaps tell you it's the family's fault because they did not make their child understand what it takes. Or do we blame the society, which celebrates excellence and dismisses anything less? These are not easy questions to ask. There are no easy answers either. There is a clear institutional failure. The mental health issues faced by students need to be addressed. Exam anxiety can no longer be shoved under the carpet. Stress over marks is not a rite of passage. So what are the authorities doing about it? The spate of suicides in India's test prep hub quota led to the authorities taking action. Certain guidelines have been drafted by the Education Ministry titled Omid, which means hope. It stands for understand, motivate, manage, empathize, empower and develop. The guidelines are for schools, family members, teachers. They direct the schools to be more sensitive to the students' mental health. They recommend forming a school wellness team, which is equipped to handle any crisis situation. Also, an orientation for teachers and family members to build awareness around student suicides. But all this will only work if implementation is carried out with efficacy and sensitivity. We need to change our mindsets and stop glorifying an exam as the end of the world or the only route to happiness or success. Disappointment and failure are parts of life. They are inevitable. But we cannot afford to lose precious lives over them.